Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's Adam here with Retro Repairs, and I've got another video here for you today. Um, this is going to be a pretty quick video. It's not a repair video, um, as I usually do, so if that's what you're looking for, um, you might have to hit that next button. But uh, what I've got here is some new equipment that I'm going to be using for my repairs. So I've had a couple people ask me about what type of soldering equipment to use, or what's best to use, or what I use, and... Um, it's it's really difficult to say exactly what to recommend to people as things such as budget come into play um, skill comes into play your use that you're gonna use it for comes into play you don't need to go out and buy a $700 soldering station in order to do some basic repairs doing something like changing a battery in a Super Nintendo cartridge is actually very easy you don't need expensive equipment, you can do it with a $5 Chinese knockoff soldering iron that you get on eBay. However, um, I've done enough soldering now that I think it would be beneficial to have some better equipment, so what I've done is I went online and I made a purchase for a new soldering station. So, it just arrived today and we're gonna crack it open and show you what I've got. So, I bought this on eBay, it cost about 100 bucks US. And what it comes with is the soldering station. It also came with a set of uh, side cutters and an extra tip. So that kind of sold me on this particular seller over some of the other sellers, just having those little bonuses thrown in here. Um, side cutters are really helpful to have if you do any type of through hole soldering. As So these are flush cutters. They can get up nice and close um, up against the board to snip closely and cut the wires there. This is an extra tip for this soldering station as it's helpful to have multiple uh, tip styles. But this is the main purpose of this review and it's the Heiko FX888D. Now, what this is, uh, like I said, it costs about a hundred bucks and it is a, it's a variable wattage soldering station. So. Um, you can control the temperature if you're soldering different types of materials such as lead free versus leaded solder or yeah lead free versus like a 40 60 40 lead solder um, you can control the temperatures so that you're not overheating it or you're heating it enough um, it's apparently very well rated and very durable so um, when I looked online on I did a little bit of research on Amazon and uh, eBay reviews and then other um, third party like message forms and stuff with hobbyists that use soldering equipment a lot and the reviews have been overwhelmingly positive for this guy um, from what I get out of it um, it looks like for about a hundred bucks this is probably the best bang for your buck you can get I looked at some other cheaper options such as a uh, some like knockoff Chinese clones of a Weller machine or an older version of this Heiko um, and they just don't they don't seem to be reliable. Um, Heiko is a great manufacturer, as is Weller. They're probably the top two that you'll see out there regularly, and most of what you buy from them is probably going to be pretty solid. So I felt that I could trust the Heiko brand, and the FX888 and the 888D seem to be uh, definitely one of the favorites, as it combines low cost with really durability and high performance. So. What we're going to do here is crack this open and show you what you get for a hundred bucks in a soldering station. So, I mean, firstly, obviously, you get a nice little sleeve here. Um, a lot of things don't really have, you know, fancy graphics and stuff on the box. I was honestly just expecting to get this, but it doesn't really make a difference to me. So, opening it up. So, this is supposed to be brand new and it looks pretty good. Uh, what we got here, instruction manual on how to use it. And then we have the soldering pen. So I'm going to take this out really quickly. So this guy, you actually connect it to the soldering station. And this is basically the replacement for having a regular soldering iron that you plug into the wall. So it's the same idea. Um, it's still, as you can see here, it has the same kind of tip to it. This, In this case, it's a chisel tip. Um, but it has a unique end, so it has to plug directly into the station. You can't plug this into the wall or anything like that. Um, it feels pretty good. The strain relief uh, bends a fair bit. The cord is nice and pliable, which is good. 
I hate on one of my current irons. It's a, it's kind of just a cheaper Weller soldering pencil, but I hate that the cord is so stiff. So every time I try and use it, um, if the cord's been wrapped up like this, it kinks and it gets in the way and it knocks things off the table. So this is nice and flexible, which is really a great um, thing to have on there. If I get you a little bit of a closer up image here, let's see if I can get rid of that glare. So the pen is the Heiko FX 8801 and it's ESD safe. So that means that um, the handle itself is not going to transmit a charge into me, into the components that I'm working with. It means it's properly grounded. So it is suitable to work on electronics with. So we're gonna put that to the side. So just a little bit of packaging here. And now we've got the soldering stand. So this is for holding the soldering iron when it's not in use. Comes with a cleaning sponge and it comes with a cleaning wire. And I'll go into these a little bit later. And now we have the power supply unit. So this actually is a pretty heavy unit. Um, the outside, it, it looks like it's some sort of plastic, but um, underneath is definitely metal. And throughout most of this, I'm gonna say is definitely metal. So um, there definitely is some heft to it. I'm imagining the plastic is helpful so that it's not conductive if I say where to touch it while charged or something. Um, so it probably helps insulate the unit a bit. Put all that to the side. Okay, so that is basically what I've got here. Um, so I'll go about kind of looking at this a little more in depth. Now, a couple things you have to be worried about when you're buying uh, soldering equipment, especially from really popular brands like Heiko or uh, Weller, is getting fake stuff. Um, there's a ton of knockoff manufacturers that make clones of this very system and clones of some of the better selling Weller systems and clones of some of the older ones too. Um, so you have to be aware of what you're getting. Um, when you look at the pictures, I mean, if you look at this, to be honest, it kind of looks a little cheap in that basically it's just the color scheme. It looks like it's made of, you know, primary colored plastic. It looks like it could be something a kid would use. Um, however, actually feeling this stand, this stand is metal. It's solid metal. Um, it really feels pretty durable. You can open it up. And the inside insert is also, this is aluminum, which is the tray to hold the soldering brush or the soldering wire. But it definitely, I was concerned that this would uh, melt or warp or something due to heat from the soldering iron when not in use. And that really doesn't seem to be the case. It looks like it's going to be a really solid stand. And the pencil fits in there really quite nicely. It, I mean, it has a little bit of a wiggle, but... It holds itself in place even if I have it upside down. It takes almost it being completely upside down for that pencil to fall out. I can hold it there at probably, I'm gonna show you that angle, just like that and it's not going anywhere. So, really good feeling stand. The station itself, again, like I said, it's got some heft to it. Uh, well, let's go plug the pencil in. So it's got a solid feeling connection. The buttons, I mean, they feel like buttons. There's a power switch on the side. And underneath, it has your basic uh, voltage information, model number, that type of thing. So um, nothing really unique on the bottom there, but that's essentially what you're going to get with that. Um, I think next what I'm going to do is plug it in and we're gonna get it up to heat and see how long it takes until I can melt some solder. I'm also going to plug in my cheaper soldering iron at the same time and see, um, see how long that takes, kind of really show the difference in performance between those. Okay, so before I go too far, I'm gonna show you some basic uh, uh, setup for this thing. So I've got this off right now. So we're gonna set up the soldering stand. So now the stand, like I said, the bottom will come right out and it comes with two parts. It comes with the wire brush or the wire, uh, the cleaning wire 
and then the cleaning sponge. So we're going to have to open these up. Now the cleaning sponge has two small little cutouts right here. And these are supposed to come out, and they're supposed to fit apparently in here somehow. So I think they just go in the bottom. Oops, that's out of view, sorry. They just go in the bottom like that, and then this fits over top. So once that's sitting in place, you have to use a little bit of water to moisten it. I don't think that's quite right. Oh, there we go. They just go straight down. There we go. So we put some, pour some water in it. You don't want too much water. You don't want to really saturate that sponge. That might have been too much, actually. I'm going to use another sponge to squeeze some of the water out into it. go now the cleaning wire it sits in this insert that goes inside of the stand and then when you close it it pops out right there so when you're cleaning your your uh, soldering iron you can either clean it with this or clean it with the sponge let's see if we can soak up some of that water There we go. Okay, so that is set up and ready to go. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to turn on the station and I'm just going to use the preset temperature. I'm not sure exactly what it's set at, but I'd like to imagine it's set automatically to melt solder. So probably around 600 degrees, I would hope. And then we're going to plug in both of my soldering pencils. So one of them is a this is the better of the two. It's a Weller. It is a SP40. I don't know if you can read that right on the hosel of this. There we go, right beside my thumb. It's a Weller SP40, so a 40 watt soldering pencil. Has a chiseled tip on it, so it's a pretty big tip, but it does have its uses. Um, I use that one a fair bit, mainly because it's better than this one. This one is unbranded and if we look on the top it will say Taiwan so obviously made in Taiwan um, the tip is pretty crappy the tip is pretty oxidized as well um, I don't know the wattage of this it doesn't say anywhere I would imagine it's probably 30 25 watts but again I'm not positive either way we're gonna plug both of these in at the same time and I'm going to turn on the Weller slightly after, so within seconds though, and we're going to see which one will melt solder first. Okay, so one in, two in, Weller is turned on. Okay, so it's preset to 750 and it's already firing up the temperature right now. So I'm going to take my solder here, being careful not to tangle these wires and it's not melting on this weller. Let's try it on this guy. So it's already melting on the Heiko. That's melting quite nicely. So I'm not exactly sure how long that took. I'd have to go back and look, but um, very quick. Let's try the Weller again. Still not melting on the Weller. Just hasn't gotten hot enough yet. Let's try my nice Chinese knockoff one. Still nothing. Got a little case of the morning shakes here. I just had coffee, but no breakfast. So we're already up to 750 degrees, and I think that's, I think this goes up to 800, I can't remember, but either way, that's more than plenty to melt solder on that. Look at how quickly this solder melts. So we will 
wipe some of that off. So apparently people do prefer to use that soldering or the cleaning wire instead of the sponge. And I mean, it seems to work pretty well. All right, let's try the weller. All right, so it's now starting to melt a little bit, but not nearly as quickly. There we go. So it's melting a bit. Now let's try this knockoff one. Still not melting. A little bit on one spot. So there's definitely hot spots and cold spots on this tip. But it's not melting very well. There we go. Got a little glob on it. So, finally melted. So, as you can see, you pay a little bit more and you definitely get a much higher quality heating element. Now, granted, this one has a much higher wattage. This goes up to 75 watts, whereas the Weller here is 40, and I assume that uh, black one is less. Um, but, like I said, it does heat up quickly, and it's supposed to retain its heat at the tip a lot better. So, that makes for more consistent uh, soldering joints whenever you do need to solder anything. Uh, I have noticed when I did use this one that there would be times it just wouldn't melt the solder if I used it for a little bit. Um, either cleaning it or soldering with it had lowered its temperature. So again, cheap crappy soldering iron versus $100 setup, which again, $100 is by no means an expensive soldering iron. Um, you can spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on soldering setups. So again, it's a basic setup here, but you're getting into the higher quality brands higher quality still without paying a lot of money so um, I'm gonna be using this one going forward on my videos and hopefully I'll be able to show a couple actual soldering tests with it and show you and be able to really give you an idea of whether or not it's worth it but um, so far it looks like it's a good quality feeling unit hopefully it holds up and hopefully it uh, continues working well for me so that's going to be about it for this part of the video. Like I said, it's just a short little unboxing and demo of the Heiko FX888D. So hopefully uh, you found it interesting if you were on the fence of what you want to buy. Um, I mean, that's what you get with the Heiko. It looks to be a good quality unit. The other one that I was considering was a bit cheaper. It was the Weller, uh, I think it was called the WLC100. So again, uh, it's a less expensive iron it probably costs about $45 American similar setup just uh, less power I think and less it doesn't uh, store it doesn't store temperatures or anything this one actually does have memory so I could have a high temperature for lead free solder and I could have a lower one for leaded solder or whatever I happen to be doing with it so it does have a couple features it's not full of all the bells and whistles but um, it definitely looks and feels like a nice quality unit so um, thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully uh, you at least found this interesting if you were looking at potentially buying one of these. Um, again, that's what you get out of the box. This wasn't a full demo, so I didn't show you um, how it solders. I mean, doing a couple of joints won't necessarily tell me a whole lot. It's something you got to really use a fair bit to make sure that it works for you for your normal day-to-day -day soldering requirements. So again, thanks a lot, and uh, we'll see you next time.